really cool things that we do in technology. And chemistry has been around for maybe about 180 years. All right, what do we do? We heat things under high temperature, we put things under high pressure, and we use all these organic nasty solvents to make these molecules. All right? Now nature, if we look out the window and we look at a tree, or we look at a leaf, or we look at a cell, or we look at something, nature outperforms humans hands down in its diversity and its complexity and its beauty. But not only that, but it does everything at room temperature, does everything at, at ambient pressure, and uses water as a solvent. So not only does nature outperform us in what it does, more importantly, nature outperforms us in how it does it. Far more gentle. Now, this isn't a new thought. A lot of people have been looking at it. But I went and I said, why? Why is it that nature can do this? And so I call this a thermometer is a molecular speedometer. Okay, ready? Here comes the chemistry lesson here. Brace yourself. When we learn about molecules, we learn that molecules have unique shapes. Okay, and when molecules react, they bang into each other, and only one precise trajectory causes a reaction to happen. So when molecules are reacting in some beaker or a flask or in some manufacturing place, most of the time they're just banging into each other doing much, not much of anything. And so because it's a rare case that it does a reaction, by heating it up, by putting it under pressure, those collisions happen more often. So a thermometer is a molecular speedometer. All we're doing is we're randomly... Now here is the epiphany. There is never a reactive collision in nature. Never in nature do two molecules crash into each other and react. What happens in nature is everything is in a semi-solid condensed state, and the first thing that happens is molecules snuggle up to each other, and they orient, and then they react. Huh. So I called this molecular psychology. Okay, think about it. Here is this little clicker thing that I'm using. Can you imagine when this came out of the manufacturing process, you can almost hear the inaudible screams of all the molecules saying, no, because we forced this molecules egotistically to make this product. Well, what if instead we put the molecules on a couch and said, what would you like to be? We in our sciences, we love our subdisciplines. There are so many subdisciplines. You go to a science library, you look at all the journals, the journal of this, the journal of that. It's not enough to be a chemist. You gotta be an organic chemist, not an organic chemist, a synthetic organic chemist, not a synthetic organic, it's a heterocyclic synthetic organic. Box, box, smaller, 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 smaller. At this point in time, were there a group of people calling themselves people who are looking at making things environmentally benign and less toxic? And no. And so the unmet need is we had to create a science that focused on that first. And that is the birth of green chemistry. The guy at the EPA and I said, we need to come up with a new way of looking at making stuff that looks at the environment and toxicity first. And so the idea is, is that if a technology is better for the environment, works really well, and has the right cost, because this can't be just for people who can afford it. If you can get all three of those, then we got green chemistry. How can we make that happen? And so he and I, we were, we were hanging around once, and he suggested, let's write a book. And I was kind of hesitant, but I said, oh, okay. And we wrote this book. Had I thought anyone was ever going to read this book, we would have written a better book, okay? <laughs> uh, I feel like Forrest Gump. All of a sudden, this thing just explodes. It gets translated into 15 different languages. I've been to over 40 countries, meeting presidents and prime ministers and cutting ribbons and giving talks about this thing called green chemistry. Very, very strange, very strange phenomenon. But the only thing that's really useful in, to chemists is the 12 principles of green chemistry that say, when you first design a product, that is the time to think about what negative impacts you're gonna do. Not after you invent it, before you invent it.